let's see, what kind of mask do we want to discuss tonight here in the Mask Fan Attic? Let me think, an alien, a mummy, a robot, a zombie, a slasher. What about a vampire? We haven't talked about a vampire mask in a while. Let me just set the mask finding, special mask finding flashlight here to vampire. And let's see. Any vampires? Uh, might be skulls, aliens, might be uh, Frankenstein masks, werewolf masks, but I'm not having any luck finding it. Oh, 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 when it makes that sound, that's how you know it's found something. Yes, it has found a vampire mask. What do you know about that? And this particular one came out way back in 1979 and was in production throughout the 80s and well into the 90s, so that means if you want one, that's good news for you because that means there were about 68 kajillion of them produced over the years. Although uh, long since discontinued, not available anymore. Unless they reintroduce it by the time you watch this. I can't uh, say for sure, can I? I may have to tra travel back in time just to change this video if that happens. But anyway, look, did I mention this guy? It's called Drac. Just simply Drac. D-R-A-C, because of course, um, well, as you may be able to figure out, uh, that would be uh, kind of short for his real name, which is Ephraim Zimbalus Jr. No, no, it's not really Ephraim. I'm, I'm being facetious. That was levity, is what that was. His, his assumed name, one would assume, would be Dracula. And uh, this particular version of Drac, a B-something Studios product from back in the day. And, uh, well, this particular copy like many of us here in the attic, has seen better days, is old and kind of worn out, and uh, the rubber's not cracking or anything, so um, that means he's still in good shape and still plenty good enough to display. When you buy very old masks, if you get a chance to see them and touch them in person, like in a uh, costume shop or some such, uh, that's one thing you want to notice, is if the mask has cracks, and holes in it and it's really starting to get all brittle and crunchy like a big monster head shaped potato chip. That's probably not a mask you want to uh, uh, spend a great deal of money to purchase. You, you don't want to um, invest a great deal of money in a mask that's stiff and cracky. This one luckily is not all stiff and cracky even though it is a little distorted from being a hundred years old. Now Drac, uh, just kind of a, a generic all-purpose vampire in the classic uh, iconic uh, manner, you know, the big black widow's peak, the black hair, uh, and, and the very pale face. Now, most of these were the same color, this very light gray with just a hint of blue in it. Some of them I've seen were a little bit bluer or a little bit whiter, but uh, generally pretty much the same color. And these great teeth, the people at Be Something did such wonderful uh, molding of, of fake teeth in their masks, didn't they? But uh, again, just a generic all-purpose vampire. I'm sure a lot of them ended up in haunted houses where teenagers ran around with them and abused them. Uh, so so why, why am I even talking about? Well, in addition to its status as a pretty cool generic vampire from Be Something Studios, it is of special interest to fans of the Halloween movie series. That's right, the movies with Michael Myers. Because in Halloween 4, Okay, the return of Michael Myers from the late 80s. Uh, there was a scene in Vincent's drugstore where Michael steals his mask. And why in the world were they selling um, white Captain Kirk masks at a drugstore in Illinois in 1988 or 87? Or, but I don't know. But, but anyway, the, and, and that's only one of the implausibilities. With that, that's for somebody else to discuss. We're just here to talk about masks. One of the masks you can see on the shelf in the drugstore from which Michael Myers steals his famous mask is a B something Drac. Imagine how different the story would have uh, felt had he chosen this instead of a white Captain Kirk mask that he does uh, choose in the movie. But now, since then, uh, a lot of people have taken to trying to collect all the masks used in the Halloween film series. Uh, the iconic one, the main one, obviously being Michael Myers' mask, but if you want all the masks that were used, that made an appearance in any of the Halloween movies, then you need the ones that were on the shelves in <clears throat> a Halloween 4. And one of those was Drac. Now, uh, for that reason, he has become of more interest to collectors 
than some of the other uh, non-movie, the other generic monsters of the time. Now, as an interesting side note, footnote, footnote, side note, note. Um, in addition to the original Drac, a very talented guy in the UK named Kevin Ardren sculpted his own version of Drac, not of Dracula, but of this mask, because his goal was to recreate the collection of masks seen in the drugstore in Halloween 4. And again, this has been out of production for a long time, so these are no longer available. Uh, the only chance you'll have of finding one is if you find a costume shop that has some old stock, or if one turns up on a fee day or someplace like that. But uh, Kevin Ardren made his own version of this mask, and it looks like this, okay? This, this is the original Drac, this is remake Drac, okay? And again, this is, this is sort of a Halloween 4 tribute-y kind of thing. It's not really uh, a commercial mass-marketed mask. This is just a handmade thing that this, uh, this fellow made uh, to look like the mask seen in the movie. And the thing I think is amazing about it is that he did this and he got this close to the look of the real thing without having one to sit down and copy and examine and uh, you know use for reference. He did this amazingly good of a job doing nothing but freeze framing uh, the movie and looking at stills of the one in the film. And I think that's pretty astounding that he got this close with no more reference than that. So kudos to Mr. Ardren for his excellent work in this drag mask. In a way, I kind of like it even better than the original. Now, of course, the original is what you want uh, as far as authenticity and fidelity to Halloween 4, you, you, want, uh, you have to have a be something original. But in terms of just overall masks, this one might be a little cooler, you know? So you never know. If I, get a, um, if I ever get asked to work at a haunted house where I'll be wearing a black cape and jumping out at people, uh, I may just wear the, the Kevin Ardren Drac remake. And one other thing I should mention, not that it really matters, but I'll mention it. Why not? is that a lot of the Drax had a little bit of red under the eyes. Just not, not like a big red ring, just a little bit of a red uh, line underneath each eye cut. And uh, as you can probably tell, this particular one does not have the red lines under the eyes, but some of them did. And another great mask from Be Something Studios, makers of so many great masks for so many years, and uh, still doing business today as Zagoni. Now, they have reissued some of their uh, older characters, so you never know. They may uh, re-release a special edition of old Drac here someday. And, uh, you know, you may have one then, and you can join the Drac Pack for a snack. <laughs>